uh, welcome uh, to the committee. Uh, first, I'd like, if I may, to say a word about the background and the purpose of this morning's uh, session before we start. Uh, the background is sadly very familiar to all of us, and the background is a scandalous failure of care in a NHS Foundation Trust that was supposed to serve uh, the people of Mid Staffordshire. I think we all agree that it's deeply shaming uh, for the National Health Service as an institution uh, that these events should have happened. It's shaming to the NHS as an institution and also for those individuals who are implicated in that failure of care. So page 25, paragraph 84, you talk about talking to the three chairs. What did you talk about? Sorry, I'll just... See your quote. I will continue to take oversight of the process of establishing the proposed new SHA and, uh, and with the three chairs uh, to take overall responsibility for the management of the three SHAs. I will meet them on a fortnightly basis. At that stage, when you were talking to these three mm. chairs, yeah. did you find any rumblings about what was going on at Stafford Hospital? No, no there were absolutely no rumblings. The local chair and the three boards continued to operate during that period. The local chair raised no <coughs> issues. And I'm sure he's in his statement to the uh, inquiry said he had no idea that the kind of appalling care that was going on. I, my accountability was very different from them. In the sense, I was held to account for... Um, uh, for delivering the change, for delivering three SHAs into one, for moving, um, uh, I think it was probably 70 PCTs into about 40, 32 I think, I can't remember the exact, that, that day, for making sure that all the organisations delivered what was regarded as the must be done, which is essentially access and MRSA and uh, uh, C diff reduction. And that was narrow, and I accept that that was, that was a narrow definition of accountability, but that was the way in which it works. And I think it shows in, in the Mid-Staffordshire uh, Francis report, was that was a big failing in the whole system. And you were in the middle of it. And I was in that system, and I was, in the part, of it. And I was part of it, absolutely. Yeah, okay. So turn to paragraph 87, page 27, and... Um, the counsel to the inquiry said that Cure said it was chaotic. Cure, the NHS, described it as chaos, chaos in the West Midlands, and you refuted that. Yeah. So what would you call it then? You just described something to me which sounds very chaotic. No, I didn't, I, I didn't say so it was So what would you call chaotic. it then? I think the system in the West Midlands as a whole... No, what would you call it, Sir David? If, you don't, if it's not chaotic, what would you call it? What name would you give to this process that's happening, that you're in the centre of? We, had, we were taking through a set of changes which were very difficult, which involved <coughs> losing members of, of staff, changing organisations, losing corporate memory, all of those things. But it was done in an organised and planned way. It was not haphazard and it wasn't, um, it wasn't chaotic. It was actually planned and organised. So the core function of the NHS is to, is to make people well. You didn't know anything about that. None of these concerns that happened at Stafford Hospital came through to you while you were undergoing this process. None of the... We had no... I had no idea. It was never... The, the information was not brought to the SHA. We didn't see any of the information that would lead you to believe that there was all of this going on 